Okay, I just want to take a couple minutes to look at economic development planning, um, more kind of how this would take place at the local level. Um, so local economic development programs, most economic development organizations operate at the local level. This would be your city, your county, your town, maybe even the neighborhood. Um, so this isn't the state level, this isn't the national level, it's, it's your local level is where most of this happens. So the main motivations or goals for economic development program are going to be focused on employment, focused on the property tax. I highlighted that because um, property taxes are the main source of revenue for local economies. So that is really a lot of where their local economic development is going to focus. Um, and there's a lot of, really, they get good support from businesses um, and labor, um, workers, the kind of the labor force. So um, that's really, you know, kind of the main motivations for local economic development programs. So how to promote economic growth. You're an urban planner. Your specialty is economic development. Um, what are you going to do? Um, here's a list, and we will go through each one of these. So um, sales and promotion offering public subsidies, special small area finance arrangements. Um, you can make sites and buildings available. You can have an incubator building. Um, you can do revolving loan funds, and then you can use land use controls and provide infrastructure. So let's go through each one of these in a little bit more detail. So sales and promotion, this is what it sounds like. You are doing public relations, you're advertising, sales, selling and marketing efforts. Um, within this framework, cities are viewed as a product and um, as a product you, you, you that you have to sell yourself. Like your city's a product, go sell the product. Um, and it, it's not objective, you know, this isn't kind of a, an objective list of data measures. This is sales. This is promotion. This is really kind of creating this image of your city as um, better than other cities, you know, is, is a good place to visit, a good place to live um, and work, um, a good place to, to do business. So yeah, so sales and promotion. This is part of economic development is, is creating this image of your city um, is a good place to be. So um, more on the financial side, you can do subsidies. You subsidize um, corporations. One of these, um, kind of what this looks like, you could do a tax abatement is a really common tool. This is where you, uh, what this means is you would reduce property taxes for new commercial and or industrial development. So this is going to be attractive to new businesses to come into a city. It's like, oh, I can... Um, an incentive would be like reduce property taxes. So that's one tool. Um, Another kind of cool thing is um, this idea of enterprise zones. Um, this would be a designated area in a city that offers a variety of these type of tax breaks, maybe grants to do business there, land use waivers, you know, um, if, if the land isn't zoned for a business, maybe you get a waiver um, kind of built into this enterprise zone. So um, you can look them up. I mean, this is a physical space like this little, um, picture I have here, this kind of map of, of Colorado, and they've carved out this piece of it as an enterprise zone. So this is a designated, you know, on a map, you designate a, a physical area in the city um, that you offer a whole bunch of different types of, of subsidies and financial incentives for locating your business there. Um, so that's what a subsidy is. Um, there's also these special, these kind of smaller areas that have these finance arrangements. Um, some common ones are if you hear of a TIF, that's a tax increment, tax increment financing. This means um, that the increase in property tax revenues that result from new development in the area is reserved for reinvestment in that area. Okay, so it's this idea that um, if a firm locates there, um, everyone has to pay property taxes. You know, you're a homeowner, you pay taxes on your house, but if you're a business and you pay taxes on that property as well, and that's where the city gets money. Um, that's where the economics part of it is, is the city gets money out of those property taxes. But the idea is instead of this, um, this, the tax revenue just going into like a general fund that you can use for anything, um, the, that tax revenue is reserved for reinvestment in that specific area. Um, another kind of version of this is bid, like a business investment district, where um, property owners are charged a surtax above the normal property tax rate. 
and um, with that surcharge is dedicated to investment in the district. So it's not a um, so it's this idea you pay your tax, but then the businesses in the district agree to pay a little bit more, um, knowing that that's that's going to be reinvested right back into their location, into their district. Um, and this is actually pretty acceptable, like politically, um, the, the firms kind of buy into it, people buy into it, because this link between who pays and who benefits is really clear. Like you're paying the money to be in that district, but you know that the money is going to get reinvested right into kind of economic development in that area. So it's not like your extra taxes can go towards just anything, you know, it's not like this extra taxes can go to pay um, firefighter salaries or pensions or whatever. Um, you know that you're paying those, that money, but you know it's going to get reinvested into something like um, maybe fixing up the streets around where in the district where your business is located. So um, that's kind of gives you an idea of what a special area finance arrangement would be. And um, this map here is like of New Orleans and how the downtown development district um, kind of designates different districts. Um, for investment in, um, within New Orleans, your sport and entertainment district, your biomedical district, the central business district, and arts district. So this is just showing you that a city like New Orleans has this economic driver, this downtown development district. Um, they, they designate areas that say, okay, we're going to reinvest um, money here in the name of economic development. So another um, tool would be making sites and buildings available. So um, some of this has to do with the public provision of sites. So you would use public money, public funds, and possibly eminent domain um, to acquire, develop, and develop sites. Remember, remember from previous lessons, eminent domain is where the government can take um, control of private land if, if it's going to be used for a public good. So um, that's one thing, is that you um, acquire these parcels, these sites, um, for development. Um, one way this looks like is industrial parks, which is like a uh, city will kind of carve out these specific larger sites and say, okay, this is an industrial park um, for business development. Um, another way is that um, you can actually construct a building and then find tenants to occupy it. So before this kind of provision of land, you just have land that's designated for economic activity for attracting commercial and industry um, is one thing. But then um, the cities can go as far as actually constructing a building and then finding firms um, to locate within it. Um, one thing you're going to have to do with this is kind of look at these topographic and geographic factors even before you start assembling land or building on land. Is you're going to look at things like um, how is the soil? Is it in a floodplain? Like geographically, is it physically even able to, to handle um, development? And then another uh, mechanism that I think is kind of interesting is called land banking. What this means essentially is that the governments will collect parcels of land and just hold them um, for potential commercial sites. Um, you just kind of start collecting land um, in a bank, really, and hold them um, and, and designate them for commercial development. So um, your textbook doesn't speak too highly about land banking, but I think it's been um, effective for in addressing blighted property like particularly around Detroit and then in New Orleans post Katrina um, land banking is a mechanism to um, combat blight so um, we can talk more about that in class so incubator buildings I don't know if you guys have heard of these um, really this is like where a city would build a building that provides space for startup businesses so it's for um, beginning entrepreneurs, it gives them a shared physical space so that each person, each new like business owner is not trying to rent their own facility, kind of pay, they wouldn't have the money to pay for all their own individual things. So it gives you this shared space, um, kind of cuts down on cost for young entrepreneurs. Um, it gives technical assistance. Um, a lot of times it's, it's just, it's more than the space though. They'll create these kind of mentorship relationships with um, leaders within the business community. And um, this picture I have here, Propeller, this is one that's in New Orleans. So Propeller would be like your, you know, it's pretty popular, I don't know how popular it is, but um, it's your incubator building, your incubator space um, in New Orleans. So um, some of you might want this for your 
utopias that you're designing because I know some of you are looking for kind of innovative entrepreneurial type cities so an incubator building this is this is a specific kind of thing that cities do in, to promote economic development to kind of attract that creative class that, that we've talked about in some other classes I don't know if we got to it in this one but ask me about it if you need to okay so the last one we'll, we'll cover is the use of land use controls and zoning. Um, what this means is that a, a city can use land use controls to ensure that privately owned land is going to be available for commercial development. All right, so if it's the public land, if the government owns land, they can develop it how they want to. You know, um, they can designate how to develop it. But um, zoning that we talked about before and these land use controls are really a way to, to kind of for the government to kind of control or designate how private um, property can be developed. So really all you do is you zone adequate land in the appropriate category. You know, so this is just an example of a zoning map. Um, and you would just want to make sure that you have enough of it designated for um, commercial development, like as opposed to um, these swaths of land that are designated or zoned just for residential development. This would be making sure there's enough land zoned for commercial development. And then, um, you know, this picture actually is kind of interesting because it has one of, you can see up top here, this industrial park carved out when before in the lecture I mentioned the idea of industrial parks, of designating um, a specific piece of land for commercial and industrial development. So um, that is it for your um, economic development um, lesson right now.